Hey, this is Dean from Leatherwolf, and you're watching CMS TV. Chris Aiken presents, and I, of course, am Chris Aiken, and uh, I can't believe I was able to get connected to wherever the fuck is Stan here to do an interview with this guy. He has not been home in forever, and uh, oh. and the day he has been traveling. Um, he's uh, he's the world's busiest musician. I will say that it's either him, Jeff Scott Soto, or David Ellison, and I think it's pretty much him right now. Um, He's got three bands that you do know, Crush 40, um, Axel Rudy Pell, and Hardline. And because he had an extra 30 seconds of time somewhere, he went and formed a fourth band that started another, another album and another band and another project, simply known as Enemy Eyes. And here to share all about Enemy Eyes and the, the new release, History's Hand, is the one, the only, Mr. Johnny Gioelli. Johnny, how are you, man? Chris, I'm great, brother. How you doing, man? That was a hell of an intro. <laughs> well, dude, it's exhausted. I'm I, exhausted <laughs> just hearing that. I've been practicing for months. It's like I can't ever get you on the phone. <laughs> well, I've been, I'm telling you, man, it's been insane. Uh, I mean, I so I started touring in the summer in August, right? And I just did my last show November fourth. So from August to November fourth, I was home for a record amount of four days, right? Like. I, I like I couldn't even warm the seat with my ass <laughs> in my in my house before I had to get up and pack a suitcase and go again. So anyway, I'm finally home and I'm and I'm I'm home for a few months and I got I still have such such a, an unbelievable schedule of doing another album with Axel Rudy Pell next month. Wow. I've got uh we're starting on writing production for a hardline album, but the most exciting thing to happen to me uh since i would have to say since 1992 with the the old uh double eclipse album is this new album enemy eyes history's sure. hand brother this is one of my favorite creations um just love the process of making it i love the music i i never listened to myself bro right. i hate that mm -hmm. this album has been in my ears every day on my runs and just digging it no question. Well, yeah, and you know, the interesting thing, and, and it, this is one that I'll, I'll give you much credit for over a lot of guys that do a lot of projects. A lot of guys that do a lot of projects, the projects all sort of sound the same. You know, they, they just do. And you have a pretty distinguishable voice. I mean, your voice is going to sound like you no matter what you do. But musically, this explores areas that I think the other three bands just don't touch. I mean, that's the... That is the uniqueness of this is that you found a style that I don't know if it's because you loved it and just never did it or, well, you tell me why, well, why yeah. did you I mean, find so, that style? So you nailed it, bro. So this has been like the, the piece of the puzzle that I've always wanted to snap into the, into the, into the full puzzle. Okay. And it's something that's been on my creative wish list my entire career. I mean, when I came up, I was listening to, you know, Dio, you know, mm -hmm. I was listening to Ozzy. I was listening to Sabbath and, you know, stuff like that. And I've always wanted to do a, a heavy album. Right. And it's always been in me. I just never got serious about it. And it wasn't until um, Serafino, front owner of Frontiers Records, and Alessandro and I got together because, you know, um, 
you know, we all love the metal, even though it's a sure. melodic label. We love the metal stuff. And I see what's going on in Europe with the metal festivals and every time Hardline plays, we play harder and harder. Right. And it's just one of those things. But I, I've always wanted to do this uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, you know, the most important reason is creatively, and this is something that uh, a lot of people will, uh, hopefully they'll understand. When we made this record, when I recorded these vocals, they went from the paper to the microphone. Right. So there was no like, oh, I'm going to write this and then I'm going to sing a demo. And what you hear is first take. Wow. That's what I wrote on the paper. Here they are. Right. What I wrote on the paper. And that's what went on to the microphone. And there was no going back like, oh, I'm going to re-sing that. And, no, what you hear is the authentic, real paper to microphone. Right. And it was an amazing experience, man. An amazing creative experience. Sure. And, and you know, one of the one of the things that is very different from most artists, and I know this, I probably nobody else that you're talking to knows this. These songs are new, like yeah. like really new, even right now. Like I I mean. I think you, so. you only recorded them what three, four months ago, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, they they are new. We didn't have any specific agenda, like, hey, you know, let's make it sound like a Breaking Benjamin architect, sure. five finger death, but nothing. We're like, we want to make something heavy, and we want to make it us, and mm -hmm. hopefully it'll work. You know, with like people will dig it, and that's what came out. We let music inspire lyrics, which inspired uh, melody. And that's it. There was no plan. Like, okay, we it needs to. The production needs to sound like this. We need sure. a an electronic something to do that. No, we're like, let's make a heavy album, right? And um, I don't really. I came up with Enemy Eyes. I don't know how. I don't really focus on that kind of shit. <laughs> but uh, I, I, you know, so so the band name. There's no real significance behind like, oh, sure. it was, you know, when I was 14 years old, I thought, no, <laughs> it just came out. Everything just kind of happened, man, which is a great way. That spontaneous, uh, you know, creation, you know, I love that. Right on, man. Well, dude, you, you mentioned um, Alessandro and let's be honest, we're, we're joking about you being the busiest guy in the world. He is the busiest guy in the world. I He's mean, the there's, busiest guy. there's, there's no question how busy yeah. this guy is. And, uh, you know, obviously you've worked with him on a zillion things, but you work with him full time with Hardline. Um, so how how do you guys differentiate new music when you have a working relationship in a certain style of music? Yeah, it's a great question. So first, you know, Ali and I are like the, the Steven Tyler, Joe Perry culture, you know, chemistry. So. <laughs> whatever we decide we're going to do together, mm -hmm. we know how each other thinks. That's number one. That's the most sure. important part. Um, so, uh, so Alessandro and I got together uh, on this and just, um, he is the busiest man. I will, let's clarify that. So it was, it was a few years ago, quite a few years ago, someone came to me and said, Hey man, you got like 80 something albums out. So I went to my Wikipedia and I started counting. I went, oh, wait, but they forgot this record. They forgot. And I start editing my own Wikipedia. Right. Then I started counting and I realized it was 99 albums. Right. And the eyes made 100. Nice. So then I got with Alessandro, we started counting and we stopped because he was like over 300 albums. I mean, you know, he is like the the Mutt Lang of, of today. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of people go, oh, my God, he's involved in so much stuff. I mean, would you tell back in the day, would you tell Mutt Lang, OK, that's enough. You're doing too many records. I mean, what the hell? It's ridiculous. But uh, Alessandro is definitely the the busiest guy uh, in <laughs> in music. Sure. But we just have this chemistry, bro, that we can sort of just put different hats on creatively and that's basically you know we 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 got together on this and said let's go heavy because right. i've always wanted to do this and then you know in january we start writing production for hardline and we know what hardline is about and we can sort of just conform to it and it's it's true to us sure it's just kind of like okay it's time to switch the hat now we do this but i've always wanted to do this heavy album because I see it live, I can visualize it, right. and uh, 
Is mm. that not going to be hard though to go the other way to to make this blistering record and then go back to kind of bala- ballads and and AOR style rock? Well, it's a good question. I don't know if I'm going to go back. Okay. That's kind of where I'm at, man. I don't know. I mean, look, I'm definitely at the tail end. There's always new beginnings for everybody, sure. right? But I'm sort I, I know that I'm at the tail end of my career. I'm 55. Right. I'm certainly not 22 and starting at the nose of this thing, right? So I may not go back. I may just be full force enemy eyes. I've got a lot planned, bro, for the visual aspect of this show. I want to make this a theatrical experience. Right. I don't want it to be four guys on stage sweating, screaming, and saying good night. So there's a lot to do, a lot of work to be done with this. So to answer your question, I don't know yet, bro, if I'm uh, going back. Is it hard to, to snap, put that other hat on? No, okay. definitely not. I don't know why I can't answer that. But do I want to go back? Mm, not fully. I really right. committed to doing this. Very good, man. Well, dude, one thing about listening to uh, History's Hand is, you know, you mentioned it several times that it is metal, and it's definitely metal. It's definitely not rock with a little tinge of metal. It's a metal album. To me personally, it's a very European metal album. It's yeah. definitely, I can see this more at Vakken than I can here, you know. And, I agree. And why, why did you choose that specific style versus one of the more trendy modern american sub styles is it just your voice or well no i mean i well so you nailed it first of all that is an accurate statement 100 percent. i think i mentally play into that european market because that's what i live man i'm there Mm -hmm. I'm there, you know, 10 more months than here. here. <laughs> yeah. More than I'm here. Exactly. Right. And so I think mentally that has some effect on the outcome of, of the music, but I, um, I, I, I think that's probably it. Okay. Uh, but again, bro, I didn't have any specific requirements to making this. It just kind of came out the way it came out. Like, I just, I wasn't thinking like, hey, I want this to sound like we need to put some digital shit in like pop evil. Right. I love that stuff, man. I right. love it. I love that, that sound, but just didn't come out that way. It had to come out the way it came out. Right. You know? Well, so, it definitely, it definitely came out very European and very powerful. And uh, yeah. we will definitely uh, talk. We'll dig into the record here in a minute. But I figured, Johnny, the best thing to do right here is since we're talking a lot about it, why don't we give people a taste of what you've done here? Yeah, um, man. You've got this video for History's Hand. Um, is one of the first tunes that you shared with everybody. Tell us a little bit about this song to uh, lead us into the video. Yeah, History's Hand. So it's a pretty simple concept, bro. Every second that goes by becomes obviously our history and there's shit we're proud of and there's shit we're not proud of and so this the video and the song kind of takes you through the elements of history and kind of reconfirming that we are responsible for it and that would lead you into the video you'll see when you check out the video people you'll see that this this little diego kid is scavenge uh, he's he's scavenging uh, hunting and he sees p- pieces of history that he's not so proud of to, to, to see and recognize. So it's a powerful visual and a, and, a, and a song that takes on a lot of different flavors of music. Excellent. Well, let's check it out right now. This is History's Hand. It's new stuff from Enemy Eyes right here on Chris Aiken Presents.
was History's Hand, brand new material from Enemy Eyes, brand new release, also called History's Hand, available now. Go out there and buy it, please. Do not stream it. Well, stream it too, but buy it. For sure, buy it. I don't care if you stream it or not. You know, I'm sure Johnny doesn't either. I'm sure that that penny and a half that he'll make if you stream it 4,000 times is not going to make or break <laughs> his life. Exactly. But, <laughs> but please buy it. There's there's cool there's cool stuff to buy, so buy it. All right. You mean. All right. Well, dude, obviously, let's dig into this thing, man. Um, first thing I, I'm just curious about, and I think you already sort of answered this, but I just want to be clear on this. Sure. Was any of I, I know not full songs, but was any of the ideas for this stuff that that kind of came from other stuff that maybe you didn't use i i'm, I'm gonna point to arp just because that's the heaviest thing that you've done before was any of the i don't know the ideas or the riffs or the a melody line or something things that you maybe considered at one point for arp and it just were like nah this doesn't fit or doesn't fit where we're at today or any of that bro i wish i could say yes but the 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 the, the honest to god answer is no it's all fresh from scratch uh, you know, all the spices and ingredients that, uh, that we, we threw in the pot, um, and created from, uh, I mean, with Axel Rudy Pell, I've always wanted to participate in the writing, but he, Axel takes that on himself and that's fine. Sure. So, you know, circling back to wanting to always do a, a hard rock, a hard rock, a, a metal album, um, you know, you might hear some elements of a little ARP in there from time to time, but by no means was any of it um, created because of something okay. from ARP. Not at all. I mean, this was, we started from note number one, man. Like right. there was nothing blank paper the, the amplifier wasn't even on. It wasn't <laughs> even on standby. It was nice. just not even fucking on, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the purest, purest form of creative work from the beginning. Right. And and you know what, man? That's probably the best way to do it because it's going to make it the most exciting because it's it's risky. It's risky to do a record that way. Totally is, man. We didn't really know what the outcome was going to be. We just had the idea and said, okay, let's start writing. Let's just start building this thing. We, we, we knew we wanted it heavy. Mm -hmm. That's it, bro. That's all we knew. And then we also knew that a guy like Fabio, who's a uh, Alessandrini on drums, Fabio is a young in his 20s, vibrant, powerful drummer that brings like life to these tracks, man. Sure. Those are his feet, bro. People say, right. is that a machine? No, fuck no, that's his <laughs> feet. And, and Marcos, Marcos coming from Rage, we, we cherry picked these guys. Right. We knew that their... I mean, we, there's, okay, you know, the mm -hmm. millions of musicians spread across this planet, right? Sure. And we could have our choice. We cherry pick these guys for this band based on their talent, their style, and what we knew they'd bring out of the song. So it was a very creative and intensely wonderful uh, writing experience. Right. What was their pressure? And let me specify what I mean by pressure here. Okay. Did you already have a commitment with no songs written where you were like, holy shit, I got to produce something? Or were you putting something together where you didn't know that you had had a commitment, but you know, you kind of know in the back of your mind that, you know, Alessandro and Frontiers is family. If you do something decent, it'll it'll be accepted or it'll be put out. Shit, man, you just gave me actually an anxiety attack in that few seconds <laughs> and here's why because i never really thought about that so to answer your question yes we had a commitment to create a metal album okay but no i never thought about that commitment bro until you just brought that up and made my hands buzz a little bit <laughs> i i never realized that shit i really did i needed to produce something contractually right. but i never thought it never created a pressure for me okay. because I knew that I've always wanted to do this. So I knew we were going to have a good outcome, but I just didn't know. I didn't know what the outcome was going to be. But right. And that was an anxiety moment. right? There. <laughs> well, it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a, not a dangerous move. Cause obviously you have, 
you've been with Frontier so long that those guys know, you know, they, they're pretty comfortable working with you, but at the same time, you could have put together a record and then everybody in the, in the board meeting could have listened to it and said, man, this is shit. What is this? No question about it. No question about it. We were, we just, I don't know. We nailed it. Uh, call it luck, call it talent, call it whatever. Uh, it didn't happen that way right. and they loved it and they're supporting it, uh, immensely and it's doing really, really well. So I'm, I'm thrilled about it, but yeah, we had definitely had a commitment to produce and nice. I never focused on that. <laughs> God, I feel well, that right now. Yeah. Nice. Well, dude, let's get, let's get into a couple of the tracks here. Sure. Start with, I, I always try to start with my favorite song on the record. My favorite on this record bar none and by a ton is preying on your weakness no Which, shit mine too i love it it's the most on johnny G-O-L-E song ever recorded um you know it's it's totally different for you it's moody it's dark and yeah, that's dark. that's the thing that i really your voice is kind of brightening i guess and not to that's not a kiss ass thing it just is the way the I way your voice it. is received and yeah. this is moody and yeah brr. You know, yeah, I it's was like, uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yep, fear for your life as it touches your skin. Feel it as it burns from within. A taste of the real life, the flavors of sin. Welcome to the house you're in. Yeah. I mean, there's so many people that can relate to being just feeling overwhelmed and something just attack preying on you right constantly no matter what that is and that's what this song is all about you nail it this is one of my favorites i visualize this intro in this song as the opening song at a hundred thousand seat festival there's right. no question that it definitely shows off what the band is really about it's heavy it's powerful it's meaningful and um yeah, it's it's crawling on you. It's calling on you. It's preying on your weakness. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so so simple yet powerful lyrics that um, that that drive this this song. Um, yeah, man. Uh, Tears in the night, cry out in pain. Hear it as it calls your name. Realize the warning, and you hide like a game. Welcome to the house of shame. I mean, it's just I had a blast writing this shit. Man. Uh, yeah, it's, I it's mean. Yeah. I love that. It's mean. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. I dig it. And and yeah, the voicing is is uh, different for yeah. sure. And like you said, it's not that that cheery, you mm. know, crystally Johnny. Right. And going it's not hot sherry, that's for no, sure. It's definitely not freaking hot sherry. <laughs> it's uh yeah, it's definitely not, it's definitely not. Nice. So uh yeah, that's one of my favorite tunes for sure. Cool. And the other one um that that I've been just playing over and over again, just because I I, I want to know the story behind it, Miracle in You. Why that's... do people would okay? So why I'm not the first. <laughs> You're not the first man, okay. and and I didn't I didn't know if it was a good song, honestly. Really? Yes, I I didn't quite know. Um, you so all right. So I'll tell you a little bit about the song. So the miracle in you, you know me for for a long time, and sure. you know that I'm a a positive based. You know I'm an optimistic guy. Mm -hmm. My outlook is always like things are going to be great versus things are going to be shit. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so when I wrote this song, what I was feeling, what I was thinking is that people forget that we all have special shit inside of us. We right. all have our, our talents, our, you know, our, 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 our attributes. And so the miracle in you is, is simply about finding what is special, what is intense, what makes you, you it's, and that's where the title comes, the miracle in you. Because whatever you have is different from someone else, and that is your miracle. That's really what the song is about, man. It's not that intensely deep. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, what I don't know doesn't scare me. Uh, I can face it. I can taste it here. We write our own story into the hands of glory. You know, what you don't know is what you fear. Uh, trust in the weight of it. It stops right here. I won't wither away. Uh, fall like the dust that hits and blows away. I want it all. I feel the change that feeds the miracle in you. So mm -hmm. it's just about, you know, realizing that, you know what? I I am something. Right. I am something special. I have 
a miracle within me. And that's the song, bro. I don't yeah. know what else to tell you about it. No, it it's a good one, man. It's, it's easily relatable. And then one last tune that, uh, that I personally, another one that I'm just playing over and over and over is the chase. I knew it. That's a great I one. I know that. <laughs> Shit, bro. We are, you know, we're going to have to start a radio show together because <laughs> that's my other favorite song. Nice. So, uh, the chase. So how can I explain this one? Bro, we live in this world that mm -hmm. you live in too. Sure. Every day trying to find whatever it is that brings like fulfillment, enrichment. Right. And and usually people discount the simplest things in our lives that are so important. You know, they're overlooked. Mm -hmm. And so the chase is about just that. Our world running on this freaking hamster wheel of hell right trying to get somewhere where they're probably already at they just mm -hmm. don't really understand it and i'm not trying to get so freaking artistically deep here the song is about the constant running that mm -hmm. we're doing to to feel fulfilled right and that is the chase that i feel that we're all caught up in and uh you know i'm a victim of it always sure. trying to be better, do better, mm -hmm. do more when we should just sometimes sit back and go, I've done a lot. I'm cool. I'm yeah. good. You know what I mean? That's what the song's about, but it's, it's powerful. Yeah. You know, I love this line too. What in the world are you bitching for wanting more? Don't you have what you need? When is enough enough? You're starving me on your money tree. Get out of here. You're not like me. Right. So, you know, I, I hope the people dig into the lyrics and kind of get a, a good feel for what I was thinking when writing sure. this stuff. Well, you so know, it, it, it's funny too with that song. It's almost like you channeled your inner motorhead a little bit because, yeah. you know, obviously yeah. that whole the chase is better than the catch. You know, it, it, that that's almost kind of the vibe that I got from this, from the lyrics of this was you could chase everything all you want. You can, you can want to be better, stronger, faster, meaner, tougher, whatever, all you want. But then when you get there, it's like, oh, well, now what do I do? That's it. Dude, that is the connection point right there. That's mm -hmm. it. It's a constant chase. Yeah. That's it. Exactly it's right. One of my is. favorites. You you nailed him. The only one you didn't nail was the miracle in you. I just didn't. I didn't quite. I'm glad that that connected with you because yeah. uh, I I listened to it and it's you know sonically cool and everything. I just I don't know if I really got it across. You know, musicians yeah. are weird that way. We just yeah. never quite satisfied. Well, that's it. And and I, I'd imagine you know five months later you'd re-record it a whole different way as well. So. <laughs> Have you done this before? Yeah, yeah. I, I've done an interview or two. I know a couple musicians. <laughs> That's well, exactly the way we think. Well, Johnny, you obviously mentioned touring. Um, you know, which is great to me that that there's that it's at least in your head to to find a way to make time to do this. So, is there even a timeline yet, or do you really have to wait and see how everything shakes out before you can start planning this, or what? So, there is a timeline that we are planning shows for 2024. The okay. reason not 2023 is because we're still impacted by COVID sure. and shows being pushed forward. And I only see enemy eyes uh, on big stages. Okay. I mean, it's easy for a musician to say, I only see us on yeah. big stages, but what I'm planning is very, very visual and it will demand a big stage to have characterizations and props and things like that. I'm going to put a lot of time and effort into it okay. and I need that time. So to do it correctly, I'm saying that 2024 will be the year for live shows for enemy eyes very cool is it um, are you thinking on par with like avantasia type of a of a performance and more yes okay exactly exactly right chris exactly right i want a visual experience i have a theatrical background before i started music at 11 uh from eight years old to 11 uh, a lot of people don't know this i did a lot of off broadway okay. i was an actor Wow. And I love theater, man. I love musicals and shit like that. And so this is the other part of, of Enemy Eyes is combining 
my my childhood theatrics sure. with music and then i'm full circle man with 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 my career then i feel really complete so in order to do that show properly it takes time to develop it it takes a lot of money you right. know it's it's <laughs> especially today's world yeah it ain't cheap to fly people around right now no, it uh, dude, and I keep hearing about, especially in Europe. And Lord, I'll just ask you, since you just did it for six months, yeah, I keep hearing about the ridiculous cost of of basic travel throughout Europe is like off the chain expensive. How how is that now? Yeah, it's exactly that, bro. It's probably minimum five x what it was, oh, and so I mean, our and I feel bad because it, it affects everybody. Promoters say, "Hey, you, I'll give you this much money," and we go. Well, I'd have to donate that to uh, to Lufthansa Airways, right? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. So it's and we say we simply can't. The economics simply don't yeah. work, and mm -hmm. and and then everyone gets affected. Ticket prices have to go up. It's a nightmare. We had one scenario in Hardline where we couldn't make the economics work, and I literally had to sub out uh, our our beautiful Anna bass player because it was over five thousand bucks to get her from florida to norway mm, yeah that's crazy. how it's changed yeah and um so we need that to cool down sure before we well, make you know big 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 plans for touring sure. and and i mean that's the thing is i mean there are some really big bands really big bands that are canceling tours and in europe because they, yeah. they they can't you know i think i saw godsmack canceled tour tour dates and anthrax and i mean these are big bands that are saying it's too much to do and it's like wow you know it's crazy now yeah it's becoming um the travel portion is becoming quite the challenge right even even things because you don't you know you know we all have a we have a a worldwide fuel crisis right mm -hmm, sure. so now think about tour buses and the amount of fuel we use in diesel sure. for example. so the tour bus prices are also like 5x you can't even believe so the last axel rudy pell tour that i did we we were out for about 17 shows mm -hmm. i'm going to tell you and the listeners that our tour bus alone cost us over fifty thousand. holy cow for two and a half weeks worth of dates yes Wow. So that can put things into perspective on how, why bands are canceling. It's just, we can't make the economics work. Right. I'm all for the art and love of, of giving music, but we can't go yeah. negative. I can't take, starve my family. Right. You know exactly. I mean? so it's become challenging as hell, bro. Well, we'll thank, we'll thankful and thankfully you, you guys, whether it was ARP or whether it was hardline, thankfully you guys were able to do it to, yes. You know, because you had you, you and and this is a piece I know people don't feel, and you you can share on this more than than anybody. When you cancel these shows, when you're here and you're going there, yeah, it's bigger than just okay, it's a canceled show, we don't show up. It's all of the international visas and paperwork and oh. renting back lines oh, and, oh. and you know it's so much more than than it would be if you canceled a gig in wyoming or wherever it is so much more um on top of that you know the responsibility you feel and how mm -hmm. you affect everyone's lives technicians yeah. backline people companies it's a brutal undertaking mm -hmm. to cancel. I'd sooner remove my testicles than cancel a show. Trust me on that. <laughs> and I don't want to do, remove those, but I'm telling you, it's not, it's not at all fun right. to cancel a yeah. show. And then not the other piece, the other piece on, on the fan side of it too, is when you don't go and play shows all the time and, and, and you only play certain areas some of the time you know fans make make plane flights and and let's be yes. honest they're, they're booking flights that are not refundable because they yes. can't afford the extra you know 20 percent markup to get there completely you know? i mean it's it's it is devastating devastating all the way around bro yeah all it, the way around it definitely is yeah well dude what is not devastating is this new album enemy eyes have <gasps> History's hand. It is fantastic. Um, people you, should man. definitely check it out. And where should we tell people to go to keep up with 
enemy eyes or you or tour dates and all your stuff or what? You know, we're enemy eyes is on all the, the, the normal platforms, Instagram, Facebook. We're all, we're there. You just, you just put it in the search enemy eyes. We're coming up. There you we're going to so, invade you. So go to your homepage, Google. <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. And you're going to see, you're going to be inundated with, 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 with places you can go to, to see us. There you go. Very cool. Well, Johnny, uh, let's, why don't we wrap this one up, um, with, um, the lyric video that you put out for what you say, another great song from the release. Um, tell me about this one to wrap the interview up with what you say, man. So we've all had moments in our life, man, where people come in and in and out of your life, but yet they try to tell you what you should, what you should know. And so this song is about not listening to those who are not there for you, but they just kind of come in and out of your life and you just plug your ears and you don't give a flying fuck about what they say. That is this song. All right. Well, let's check it out right now. It is what you say from enemy eyes. The album is history's hand and Johnny Gioelli. Thanks for joining me once again on Chris Aker presents. You're the greatest ever. Thanks, Chris. I know.